All right, we're going to be going over myotone testing. Uh, first, we'll start with upper extremity. Um, I typically would just start with C4. C3, you could test neck, side bending, or rotation. Um, but I want to do C4 if you're not sure if it's upper accessory nerve or the accessory nerve, um, cranial nerve 11, or traps. That's when you would want to start doing some cervical side bending and rotation. Often those are painful, so it's pretty hard to get a, was it painful or was it weak? But that's where you would start to do some of that differentiating. And when in doubt, refer out. You know, get, get some imaging if things aren't lining up, or especially if they're not making progress. Um, but I would start off with this. Let me have you bring your shoulders up. And the key is to get good pressure here. I mean, this is a strong muscle. Don't do that if you're really worried about aggravating their symptoms. A C4 radiculopathy is going to be pretty rare. And it's going to be a lot more common to have them elicit their symptoms right there. And so I do watch that. Um, but I will push a little bit, and then maybe I push a little bit harder after that. Um, C5, if they're complaining of shoulder pain, I'm, I'm hesitant to do C5 right away by doing that. But if they're not, I will go right to that. So you have to go like this, then I push down like that. There's other muscles that C5, but that's the cleanest one. The problem with C5 is that how do we differentiate between a rotator cuff issue versus a um, suprascapular nerve issue versus a C5 radiculopathy? It's pretty tough, so that's when we have to go to other things in our exam, which is outside the scope of this video, but that's my thought process with that. For C6, I will often sit right next to them, and I hold their arm like this, or I'll be right here. So that way they're supported. Bring your wrist up. Don't let me push forward. And I will do up to 10 seconds, especially if they, if I'm suspecting that there's an issue or I really want to make sure that there's not, especially if they're concerned that there may be a disc issue or some type of radiculopathy or something concerning. I want to push. I want to know, especially the stronger they are, the harder it is to find weakness in a myotonal pattern. And then now bring your hand down. And I'll just pull up like this. Don't let me pull up. Very good. And then I'll go to the other side. Hold right here. So this is when I hold it like that. Hold right there. Don't let me push forward. Go like this. Don't let me pull up. The reason I do this unilaterally is watch if I did it bilaterally. Go like this for me. And sometimes I will if I'm in a hurry, which is never a great excuse, but it's a reality. So it's, or if they're not highly irritable. So don't let me push down. That's a lot more strain. Her whole body's working. If she's been having pain and then she gives up and says that's painful, I haven't learned anything. If she says, wow, that's weak. Why is that weak? Then I've learned something. If she says, if she knows why she's weak or she feels like she knows because it's painful, that doesn't tell me anything. So that's where I want to make sure if I could get it without pain but be weak, then that's great information. So if those are, if those are, if one arm's weaker and it's not too much pain, I will then chest biceps and triceps to see if it lines up. By doing that, I put one hand here. Don't let me push down. Because sometimes I'll do here, but if I feel like they need even more stability, but this is, this side is good. Sometimes I may need to change, but don't let me push down here. See how the arm starts moving more? The arm starts coming back right here. I get a more solid test. Now don't let me push up. If that lines up with the wrist, then I'm like, then it's easier to discuss after them. The one where it was weaker with that wrist flexion, that one, is then lines up with this one. And that lines up with where your complaints are. So it fits the picture for them. If, um, and so I want to make sure I really, I really push on these uh, if their tolerance is, uh, allows it. So same thing here. Don't let me push down. Don't let me push up. Sometimes they will feel like one is weaker than I do. I want to go back until we're on the same page. You know, if, if it makes, sometimes it just shakes a little more. Sometimes it's real mild there, but we've got to be on the same page. I will always say, 
is one weaker than another one to you. Sometimes they'll feel like this flex extension and flexion are weak. I want to know which one is weaker compared to the other side. So maybe this one, you know, is 50% as strong as the right side, go like this. And this one's 25% as strong as the right side. Well then, if the biceps is weaker than the triceps, okay, C6, a little spill over into C7, um, but then it's primarily a C6 issue. And so then it lines up for me. For lower extremity, let's have you head down here, Diana. Oh wait, let me have you sit back up. We didn't do C8 and T1. Curl your fingers like this. The reason I do um, flexor digitorum profundus is because it's innervated by C8. It also, and then the peripheral nerves is median and ulnar, so I get to get a, a double whammy here. And again, smaller joints where I can really tell, the easier it is. So I put one finger, my thumb right there on the middle phalanx, and the other one right on the distal phalange, and I try to pull, and I do those at the same time, both of the second digit. And then I will go to the fifth digit and do the same thing. If there's any question, I will then do the third and the fourth digit. Remember, the first, the second digit, always median nerve. Fifth digit, always ulnar. Third digit, normally median, sometimes ulnar. Fourth digit, normally ulnar, sometimes median. But so that second and fifth are the ones that really give us the goal. If there's any questions, we want to see if they line up there, okay? And T1, I just have them spread them. Don't let me push in. Those are always weaker. They say, oh, now I can't do that. I say, I only do ones that I know I can win. Um, there's a little bit of a joke there. But, uh, you know, some of that you want to look and see if there's any muscle atrophy, muscle wasting. Again, T1 um, could be a lower um, cervical spine upper thoracic issue. It's also one we're looking at um, for like a pancose tumor. So be on the lookout for those. Let me have you on your back. So for lower extremity myotome testing, I like supine because I'm not groveling at their feet. I do that with my reflexes, probably just because that's what I'm good at. I like doing reflexes and sitting because I do my upper extremity one in sitting. A lot of times reflex testing, I do full body. Um, where myotome testing, I am only gonna do the one that I'm interested in. The reason I do reflexes full body is because a lot of times I'm curious about myelopathy even more than radiculopathy. Um, so I'll do that all in seated. And then for this one, I like it, especially with those resistive tests, Somebody's having a back problem. It's easy to then be aggravated um, with, um, with, with myotone testing. So I want to take out as much of the potential for irritability as possible. All right. So for testing, I have them bring their feet up, their knees up like this. And pay attention to my wording here. I've worked on it for a while to get them to do it how I want them to do it. Still not always perfect. But I always start with ankle dorsiflexion. I like starting here because L4, 5, and S1 are going to be your most commonly radiculopathies. The nice thing about it, it's easiest to test those without bothering the back. I'm not saying it never does, but those are going to be your higher irritable patients. So you keep your heels on the table, bring your feet up. Notice how I just brought her feet up, and so that way it gives her a cue. If I just tell her to do it, I was going to talk to her while I help her. Every once in a while they still mess up, but that's been my, my best way to do it so far. Don't let me push down. Sometimes I'll say, okay, I'm going to see how strong you are here. So they know I'm, I'm pushing. They need, to, they need to fight me. Very good. Did that feel the same on both sides? Yeah. So I want to know from them if it felt the same before I give them any feedback on it. If they say no, and I thought it did, we need to retest either now or in a little bit after I do the other ones. If they say yes, and I thought yes, I move on. Just bring your big toes up. And so I just kind of give her a cue, just your toes. If they ask if they can bring the other toes, I say sure, but I'm only gonna be measuring this one. I want to measure, I want my pressure to be primarily between the metatarsal phalangeal joint and the inner phalangeal joint of the first toe. If more distal, sometimes they, it just throws off your reading a little bit. 
um, because they may be weaker and it may not be that issue. Sometimes I'll just say, oh, does it matter that I broke my toe last year? Well, that could, that could play a factor into this. I want to push hard there. Does that feel the same on each side? Yeah. Now curl them down into my fingers. I want to try to uncurl them. So I put my thumbs just right on where the tendon sticks out above the interphalangeal joint, and then I pull on the distal phalanx there. Don't let me pull. And I really want to pull. The reason I like that for S1 is because calves can sometimes, there's other pain, especially if they're on their feet, and if you're doing it manually, it's so strong it can be difficult to pick up. That's L4, 5, and S1. Sometimes I will do um, e version, so bring it out there. Sometimes I just do with my hands like this. If I really want to push it, say don't let me push, I do one at a time. If all the other ones were strong and I'm not suspecting, don't let me push, so push out, then I, uh, then I will forego these. Because these are both, they cross over. That's L5, S1, bring it in. Don't let me push out. This is L4 and L5. Especially if you're not sure on which levels, you know, it's an L5, you're not sure if there's more, if there's some S1 or L4 involvement, doing this can, can help. Um, but I don't find these are beneficial for me very often. All right, so now that I'm there, um, now I can start moving up. Remember, L3 with the knee can be quite difficult. I want to measure that one, but if that's negative, I'm not confident it's negative. If they're getting any symptoms in the L3 pattern, or if they end up being tender at L3 palpation. I'm going to slide her out like this. I bring it up like this. I want it parallel. I'm going to hold her here. Hold right there. Don't let me push down. And I want to push on this one. If I'm concerned about any knee pain, I will ask first, you know, and I'll do it a couple times. A lot of times I'll go to the other side, or I may just do this one next. Don't let me pull up. More S2, some S1 still. But again, both of these, you can see, especially that one, they're already having sciatica issues. It could be painful. Don't let me push forward. So I'm supporting here. Don't let me push forward. Very good. If you're concerned about L3, then you also want to test, don't let me pull apart, because the obturator nerve innervates these, and the femoral nerve innervates in the extension. Both are L3. Same thing here, don't let me push down. Don't let me pull up. And notice how I get my arm here so I can really crank just on the knee. And then don't let me push forward. And I support rest. If there's, we can go back to here. So now that we've gone through those, if there's any question about these, do repeated testing. Keep your heels on the table, bring your feet up. Sometimes I'll go back to these. If I was getting maybe inconsistent or I didn't feel like you were giving good enough effort, I'll come back and do this. I'm going to repeatedly push, don't let me. And I bounce on there. And often that's where we can find, does that feel any different to you, I'll ask. Say, oh yeah, that time it did. Then that's good information, and I'll do that on whichever ones I need to need to do that with. All right, that's good.